we decided to have a little French restaurant, but we didn't know which one. But at Google, we can say best French restaurant. But the yellow paper is the first one. A, 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 French restaurant. So Mark was always interested in how do we get to the next level of performance. And he and his team took the leap of faith that they would design a microprocessor. Hey. And they would invest in that microprocessor. And then after the microprocessor was done, the blocks inside the microprocessor would contain the code for them to continue to improve and make more products or make it better. So in here is a microprocessor called MightyCat. And the Mighty Cat does everything from the volume control to the switching, to the digital to an analog conversion, to all the electronic crossovers, which he knows a lot, uh, <laughs> to all the time alignments, um, everything. All the basic secret sauce. And then the output goes to class D modules on phones and speakers. That's what we chose to do. Um, not a lot of companies have taken to this idea that maybe this is the best way to do it. And so the way I spoke out the framework system, neither good or bad, I'm just saying that's the difference. Uh, in the case of the speakers, oh, sorry, the amplifier, they make two models. There's a stereo, which is uh, two channels, 350 watts per channel. And then there's the four channel version, which is what this is, also 350 watts per channel. That's because the speakers are by amplifier. There's no crossover inside the floor, so the signal comes directly from the amplifier to the speaker. Um, this is an 8 inch woofer, and that's a ribbon tweeter. Uh, looks like most two way speakers out there that have the same kind of configuration, except it's all custom made for that. Event. The woofer's uh, resonant frequency is 27 hertz. I'll play you a test on the to show you that, in fact, it will go very, very, very low. Um, let me see if there's anything. Oh, um, so. I talked a little bit about Mark Levinson. I'll give you a little bit more about this information. Um, what I find interesting about Mark compared to all these wonderful other designers, and again, I reference this gentleman because he goes to every show that is <laughs> insane. I go to the show, I see him. Um, you get a chance when you go to these shows to meet some great designers. And many of them are incredibly talented and very, very good technically. What makes Mark interesting is that Mark is not necessarily the most talented designer out there, although he certainly does look at the design. His, his um, secret sauce is that he knows how to get the right people with the right talent around him to design what needs to be designed. So all through his career, he was with Mark Nelson, with Red Rose, uh, or with Cello, he's always been able to find the right people to do what needs to be done. Same thing with Ben Hart. But then he also brings something else to the table that I'm not aware of too many other people do. He was a professional musician first and foremost, when he was 18 years old. Check this out. He was already playing with Sonny Rollins, John Coltrane, Sonny Stead, Johnny Griffin, Chick Corea, Keith Jarrett, Stan Getz, Paul Blake, and many others. Um, Keith Jarrett is one of my icons when it comes to piano. I don't think anybody is as good as a jazz player and at the same time being able to play classical. What's fascinating is that both Mark and Keith went to Berkeley School of Music at the same time. And so Keith had a band, so Mark would go and play in his band for double bass. And then when Mark had a band, Keith would go over and play piano. They got to know each other quite well. Um, so with this background of intimate knowledge of music, professional music, as well as instruments, Mark comes to the industry with a different set of eyes. Understanding that it's not just about hi-fi, but it's also about the soul. What and how do you get that emotional connection? So, having said all of this, I'm going to play you some um, hi-fi music because we're here, we want to hear some hi-fi stuff. And in fact, one of the pieces, he introduced me, although he didn't know it, um, many, many, many years ago, when I was doing a job in a city called Oakville, I finished the job, I was driving back to the highway, and on the corner of my eye, I see a sign that says CDs. Now, again, this is going back 15 years ago, so if you're a music guy like me, you gotta stop when you see LPs and CDs. I stopped, went in, turns out it's a store that's selling world music. 
you know, not Sam the Record Man that sells, you know, the top 40s and so on. Stuff I've never seen before. I'm flipping through the CDs and I look at them and I suddenly see this incredible picture, poster of this dark-skinned lady, naked, but sideways. So you can't see anything, but it's all suggestion. Gorgeous. I immediately fell in love, got to buy the CD. Ask the person at the counter, who's this person? She gives me the cover, you already know what I'm I immediately bring it to the car, open it up, play it, and no idea who what she's singing. She's singing Portuguese. I can't even speak English. Unbelievable songs, tearing in my heart. I'm driving and I'm crying like a baby. No idea what she's singing. Played it many, many, many times, and then we moved, and the CD got lost. Completely forgot about it. Then I'm watching his video. It says, this CD, you gotta check out this song. It was at a show six or eight months ago. I'm listening to it, but in the background, because I'm doing some work, I've got his music, and there's this video playing, I hear this song. Oh my God, I haven't heard it for eight or nine years. I looked up, and sure enough, Volver, Volver, Duita, come back to me. Come back, come back. I'm gonna play that for you. As I say, I don't understand a word of Portuguese. But when you listen to this song, you tell me if somehow, it doesn't tear at your heartstrings. <laughs> and so I uh, thank you for that. <laughs> thank you for reminding me. <laughs> uh, it was one of your great advice. I can only get the stupid app to work. Ah, okay. Okay, now go to my playlist. Now, this cut is actually very simply recorded. Acoustic guitar her voice, and then towards the latter part, trumpet. That's it. But listen to how emotionally engaging it is. Flower power. She was going to be part of the hippie movement. 
And so I went from Singapore, so Singapore at the time, and probably still is, very, very, very conservative, like socialism you wouldn't believe. She comes home with Che Guevara, free, you know, like seriously, I didn't know anything. <laughs> I didn't know what that meant then, and now I understand. She didn't care about that. Um, anyway, so she uh, plays me reggae. I am, at the time, 18, 17, 16 years old. I've never heard this music in my life. Oh my God. Immediately fell in love. Every second beat does a guitar. Chick, chick, chick. Turns out all kinds of musicians love reggae. Sting is hugely influenced by reggae. Uh, Rolling Stones. I got a cut over here, man. Uh, Keith Richards I got his own reggae band. Um, this is Bob Marley, not long before he dies, playing live at the Lyceum in England. And there's all these people who've turned out to see and hear him. 1975. So imagine, I don't know how many people, thousands? Very, very, very happy people. <laughs> Smoke everywhere. I think you understand what I'm saying. All completely high and stoned, drunk. And within three bars of this music, people start singing. It's like going to a soccer club, right? Everybody been to a soccer People start singing and chanting, and there are all kinds of people who don't, who should never sing. They're singing. And they don't care because it's so much joy and so much fun. And for me, it, that should be what a stereo system should do for you. Yes, all the other stuff should do. But if it doesn't emotionally connect you, then it's failing you. Couple things about this particular song. It's called No Woman, No Cry. Many of you will know the song. For all these years that I heard the song, I always thought, hey, if you don't have a woman, don't cry. It's okay. <laughs> You're a man. You can take it. You don't need a woman. That's what I always thought about. Again, during COVID, I'm doing my research. And turns out I have as far wrong as possible from this idea. Turns out it's no woman. Don't cry. Yeah, no woman, don't cry. A woman is strong. You don't need a man. You don't need to cry. You've got backbone. You can deal with it. That's what he wrote. No clue. That's the first thing. The second thing is, although Bob Riley wrote the song, according to what I read, he didn't take any credit for it. He decided to give the copyright to his friend who was in desperate need of money. So, although this is one of his most biggest hits, he never made a penny from it which is kind of nice. All right, so let's listen to this. Now again, listen to it, and then notice how uh, the audience just starts getting into it and having a great time.
us singing. It doesn't matter. We're just having a great time. Um, we're going to play One Last Cut for you. This is quite an interesting uh, uh, piece. I don't think I've played it for this group yet. Uh, according to anthropologists, the oldest musical instrument of the Chinese uh, culture is something called the Guqi. It's uh, uh, an instrument you lay on the table. Um, there are seven strings, and it dates back to over 3,000 years. Confucius is supposed to have played it, and back in those times, only people who were very wealthy or who were the midwives or the educated would have obviously the time and knowledge and so on to be able to play this instrument. Um, I'm going to play it for you because of a couple things. Number one, the strings are tuned in such a way that they're very close together. So when you plug in one string, other strings will sympathetically vibrate. So it creates this very rich sound. Very, very rich sound. And then the second thing is that while he's playing it, he also tunes on the string. So you can hear how the harmonics change. And for audio files like us, it's kind of neat to hear these kinds of things on a real instrument. Um, okay, so let's play that. Okay. All right, Jerry here, come over to <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you Great so job. Much. I usually watch your videos. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much.
How are you doing? Man? Yes, great seeing you. And you. I just watched your video this morning. It's like you hate something wrong with the PS audio thing. Yeah, I just they, started watching. Out of phase. And then yeah, they they ended up figuring it out. Oh, that's so, too yeah. bad. Real quick before your next, mm. the pricing on these, I know people it's are going to... Yeah, it's a complete system because it's bi-amplified, so there's okay. no... So as a system, it's 50,000 US dollars, Okay. whatever that conversion is in Canadian dollars. All together. Okay. Yeah, uh, no, this is extra, this is... Uh, Obviously, yeah, Canadian. yeah. Yeah, but, this but is the, the, the amplifier and the speakers are 50. Okay. 50 now, this turned red during the song. Is this kind yeah. of a clipping indicator yeah. or something? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know, you, you know, you can't slip anything by me. You can't yeah, slip it. <laughs> every so often, Daddy's got to crank it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, every it was so good. Often. Sounded Come great on. though. You think I'm the only one. You yes, do it. I know exactly. Come on. Actually, sounded great though, even off the axis. So great job. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right, take so, care.